Okay, this video is meant to illustrate the idea of diastereomers. So diastereomers can occur when you have molecules with one than more, one, more than one chiral carbon in it. So if we look at this molecule here, and we start to think about stereochemistry, we can identify five carbons in this molecule. One, two, three, four, five. Remember these that are unlabeled, that are part of the skeletal structures, or just CH3 groups. Of these five carbons, it's pretty obvious to see that only two of them are chiral. And the two that are labeled with some tetrahedral geometry have four different things attached to them. This one in the middle has a CH2, so it's not chiral. So in order to think about the stereochemistry of these more complicated molecules, ones with more than one chiral center, we still need to think about uh, labeling the stereochemistry of each of these. So if we think about uh, trying to remind ourselves how to determine whether these chiral carbons are R or S, we first start ranking them. So here's our loser hydrogen, which is number four. Um, here's a CH3, CH2, chlorine. Well, chlorine's definitely number one. It's going to be those carbons. And you might imagine this is going to be the second rank substituent. Really, the CH2 is similar to the CH3, but that last hydrogen over here has to compete against this carbon here. So this carbon beats one of the hydrogens off of the CH3. So we can rank this one as third. Now we want the hydrogen to be in the back, right? And so, but it's not. It's pointing at us. And so right now with the hydrogen pointing at us, it looks like one, two, three clockwise. That means if the hydrogen was pointing away from us, we would have counterclockwise. And so we're going to label this carbon here as an S carbon. Okay, now what about over here? The ranking is very similar. We've got our loser hydrogen, our halogen, which is the winner. CH3 group is um, number three position. And so here, luckily, we've got the hydrogen pointing away from us. And so one, two, three, it looks right clockwise to me. The hydrogen's pointing away from us, which is good. So this chiral carbon we would label as R. Okay, does that make sense? Now let's uh, imagine all the different possibilities for this molecule. This one happens to be, we can think of it as an S. R. But, you know, there's other possible arrangements of these substituents around these two chiral carbons. Um, and so just thinking about it, right, we might imagine how many possibilities there are. Well, this carbon could be S or R. This one could be S or R. And so the laws of probability suggest that there might be four possible stereoisomers. SS, RR, SR, and RS. And so that's actually true. So let's look at these other four possible stereoisomers. Here they are. Let's try to identify what they are. Let's do it easily or quickly. This um, chiral carbon here looks the same as the one up there, so the stereochemistry hasn't changed, so that one is still um, an S. Let's see if I can do this. Still label it here. Oh, um, sorry. Maybe I can do it now. S? No, it's not labeling on that. Oh, okay, so let's do it on here. Here's an S over here. This one is opposite of the chiral carbon up here. So this is also S. So this molecule here is the SS version. Here, what do we have? It looks like this first one is switched from the way it was over here. So this looks like an R. This carbon here looks the same as the way it was down there. So that is still an S. Here, R. And looks the same as it was originally. 
R. So here are four possibilities. Our SR, or sorry, yeah, our SR, RSS, our RS, and our RR. The last thing we need to do here uh, when we're thinking about diastereomers is really just describe the relationship between these. Now, not all of these are diastereomers of each other. Um, if we think about it a little bit, we could say, well, the SR has a mirror image. The mirror images are called enantiomers. So the SR, is your mirror image, is the RS. It's that simple. Everything is opposite. So the relationship between these two stereoisomers is called enantiomers. Okay. Uh, here's an SS. It is the enantiomer of the RR. So this is an enantiomeric pair. If it's not enantiomers, it's diastereomers. So if we were to describe the relationship between this SR and the RR, we would say, well, it's not a complete mirror image. It's a different stereoisomer, though. So these are diastereomers. Okay. SS and RS are diastereomers of each other. SR and SS are diastereomers of each other. And RR and RS are diastereomers of each other.